I'd just like to go back. You've mentioned twice now that in more traditional practice, something is missing. And the work with the body really provided a means for filling that void. I, I still would be interested to hear a little further. What was it that was missing? Well, it was a, it was a connection with the organism the body and and then as as uh, Lohan went on he he realized that it wasn't just the body but it was aliveness and aliveness in the body and that led him to develop the whole aspect which we focus on so much now of uh, the vibrations to get the legs vibrating while we're grounding and to discharge the energy that way and as a matter of fact, in the exercise book that uh, Dr. Lowen wrote with his wife, the title is The Way to Vibrant Health. So by that time, he was already very aware of the importance of vibrations. And later on in his talks with me, he said that in addition to the grounding and the work with the legs and, and connecting to the ground, that, that the vibration was extremely important. And of course, now then we've developed that more and more in recent years so much so that I feel finding our aliveness, which is the topic of this workshop this weekend, is is a very, very big theme in, in our work now. No, it's a beautiful theme. Finding your aliveness is so apropos to what people need. And just so I understand better, let me try to repeat what you're explaining about what is missing there and it sounds like in traditional talk therapy and the older traditional psychotherapies people had awarenesses that something was wrong and they felt ill or they felt poor or they felt emotionally distressed but an understanding of those problems no matter how complete really isn't sufficient to change the quality of the person's life and the direct work with the body and paying attention to what is as you say a more vibrant body compared to a less vibrant body was really the missing ingredient right as i understand it that's well right. it's that's nice and simple it's nice and simple it's simple but it's not easy to get there <laughs> true enough uh, but i'm afraid that many people don't have a sense that that really is the focus of our work. No, th no, they don't. And uh, you asked on the phone maybe why bioenergetics isn't more accepted. And I think it's two things. People are really afraid of new emotional experiences. Most people form defenses against their emotions in childhood and they spend the rest of their life reinforcing those defenses so that their sadness doesn't come up, for example, or their fear, and that they, they don't want to explore that territory. That's one thing. The other thing that, that I think is it's not as deep, but it's more widespread, is everybody wants an easy answer now. And in the field of psychotherapy, I really feel my colleagues have betrayed themselves and for sure the patients because almost all of them are, are just working for the drug companies and whatever the new medication is that the drug companies come up with, most psychiatrists, certainly in the 90-something percent, just get out their prescription pad and see the client for a few minutes and write a prescription based on only symptoms. Huh? If, you, yeah. if you're depressed or you're anxious, they, they don't go any further than that, which is just pathetic because that's not really what psychiatry is about. Mm -hmm. No, I know. It, it is my belief that culturally, socially, as a collective population, we suffer from many of these same afflictions as a group as individuals do. And as a group, we're afraid to do things new. And the status quo, in my mind, is, is a Reichian block for the population. Yeah, and, and the, the next step of that is rather than to look at themselves to see how out of balance that they are and, and what needs what they need to do for their emotional and their physical health, they project in some ways it seems like it's worse. So in politics it's getting more and more vehement that they're projecting on the other guys, it's you're the guys that are wrong and we're right and all this stuff is like uh, the, that whole process of projecting the fault, blame on outward on somebody else is, is uh, 
stronger than ever. Oh, it, it's sickening. It's yeah. absolutely sickening yeah. to me. And you bring up a very interesting topic, the whole aspect of projection. I've often wondered, because it is so rampant today, people act in unethical or Ill, even illegal manners and then are so quick to be self-righteous and blame somebody else yeah. for their own behavior. Yeah. This strikes me as being uh, a Reichian phenomenon. I'd be very interested to hear Lowen or Reich, and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts as well around this phenomena of projection. It seems to me that in the Reichian way of thinking, a projection is a result of an impulse which is originally healthy and it reaches out in whatever way but is blocked as you say, it by uh, uh, defensiveness, uh, the status quo in the individual, it's blocked by their musculature and their patterns that they've developed for their own survival. And somehow, it seems to me as though projection arises out of that original impulse being blocked. But I, I, I don't know. I, I'm curious about this phenomenon of projection because, it, as you say, happens everywhere on individual level and on a collective level. Well, I, I think it has to do with that uh, impulse being blocked, but I also think as uh, babies get less care from their mothers overall, the infant, the baby, it isn't, doesn't get its needs satisfied. Either, either the need to be fed from the breast or the need to be held. Most aboriginals breastfed their babies two or three years and they certainly carried their babies with them all the time. The babies were with the mother absolutely 24 hours a day in a, in a sling uh, in, in front or that papoose kind of thing in the back. They, they carried their babies while they worked in the fields, what they went in the canoe, whatever they did. So the, the infant had its contact needs and its nourished needs met, which is so important because in humans, the baby is born about half developed and needs that contact and nourishment in a natural way to complete its development. Whereas a calf, uh, when it's born, can get up, stand on its feet and nurse and follow the mother around. Well, it takes years for human babies to get to the point where they can walk around and find their own nourishment. So when that, those basic needs are not met, people are always, have, have a great tendency to, they may not know what the trouble is, but they know they didn't get what they wanted and needed. And so that there's a tendency to feel somebody must be at fault. And then that is very difficult to, for children to blame their own parents directly when they're little because they're so dependent on them, so they learn to blame other factors or other people or other events for their needs not being fulfilled. So I think this whole projection thing is getting worse all over the world probably as this, as the babies are not cared for like they biologically need to be. Well, that, that's very interesting, Frank. I'm glad we explored that a little bit because as you say, projection is uh, is a rampant thing and the recognition of the importance of contact in early child development. These, these are examples of how I feel the work that my dad Dr. Lowen did with bioenergetics is not only valuable in the area of psychotherapy but it's very important in the area of sociology and how, uh, how our culture operates with us as individuals. And I think you're absolutely right, Frank. Little children oftentimes, uh, even, even cared for by devoted moms, moms who are really trying to do a super good job. But there is this lack of contact 
and there is this regimentation that I see happening. Uh, parents uh, want their children to be successful and the way they go about it is they fill their ch uh, children's lives oftentimes with so much stimulus actually uh, in my mind uh, whether it's sports or uh, or this or that uh, there almost seems to be no room for children just to play spontaneously anymore no there isn't and uh, <clears throat> and these are lessons that I feel the people who know bioenergetics the psychotherapists who have worked with it for years and decades I would like to see them make make it clear that there are there are these ways in which we're creating uh, creating troubles for our own children. Oh yeah, and and this is something that I believe that bioenergetics can can certainly help with. Well, it could help with because it, we certainly know about it. Uh, the, there is some move now to to get get children to play, which is a strange strange thing, because you very, very seldom see children playing by themselves and that's only way children can play is by themselves not not little league or organized soccer because those are performance things they're already performing and trying to win and play is something that comes spontaneously from the organism and little kids run around and and twirl in circles or tumble on the ground or whatever which is partly what the organism needs to develop not only physically but mentally and uh, as you know uh, this present generation of kids is, is so obese from just sitting watching the TV or the video games that they're not even developing physically and the obesity is already causing young kids to have diabetes and heart disease all kind of stuff so it's really tragic uh, what's happening with with today's children because uh, they, they, they already have the disease of middle or old age. And this is where I think that bioenergetics really can provide some help.